this is part 33 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the purpose of HTML helpers and some of the standard HTML helpers that are available in ASP.NET MVC. Please watch part 32 before proceeding. So, what's an HTML helper? An HTML helper is a method that's used to render HTML content in a view. HTML helpers are implemented as extension methods. We'll discuss more about extension methods in a later video session. For now, understand that HTML helpers are extension methods that are used to render HTML content in a view. Now let's see how to use some of the standard HTML helpers that are available in ASP.NET MVC. For example, to produce the HTML for a text box with the ID is equal to first name and name is equal to first name, there are two ways we can do that. Option 1, we can literally type all the HTML that is required or we can use the text box HTML helper. Let's actually look at that in action. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So let's generate a text box to enter first name so we can use the input element. Input type is equal to text. ID is equal to first name. And name is also going to be first name. And let's set a value of empty string because when we have this text box rendered, we don't want to display anything to the user. So obviously now when the web form renders, as you might expect, we have a text box control there. Now, instead of typing all the HTML that is required, I can use the text box HTML helper. Okay, and to use an HTML helper, we use add HTML dot text box. And then look at that, we can pass the name that we want to use for the text box. So the name is going to be first name. Let's go ahead and run this. As you might expect, it's going to generate a text box control. And then if I right click on that and view page source, notice that the HTML that is generated, it is exactly similar to what we have typed. ID is equal to first name, name is equal to first name, type is equal to text, and value is equal to an empty string. Now let's say when this text box is rendered, instead of having an empty text, I want this name John to be populated. Okay, so how do we do that? If you look at this text box HTML helper, it is overloaded and we can pass the value as a parameter. So I can use this overloaded version and pass the value of John. So let's run this now and as you might expect, when the web and the text box is rendered, we have a value of join there. Now let's say, you know, I want to have for this text box control a red background color, the font color to be white and bolded. So how do we achieve that? Simply by setting the style attribute. Now, if we're using the input, uh, you know, if we have literally typed all the HTML, then we can set the style attribute on that HTML, um, you know, declaration. But then here we are using the HTML helpers. So when we are using the HTML helpers to set the style attribute, notice that we have another overloaded version where we can pass all the HTML attributes as an object type. Okay, so if you look at the slide here, look at that I'm passing the style attribute okay, to this text box uh, HTML helper. And notice that I'm passing it as an anonymous type. Okay, so here look at the style, we are setting the background color to red, color to white, and font weight to bold. And just to speed things up, I have that string already typed, so let me copy that. And then let's go back to Visual Studio. So here, I'm going to use this overloaded version where we are going to pass HTML help, uh, attributes. So we are going to pass that as an anonymous type. And then I'm going to set the style attribute. Okay, so with this change, when we run this, as you might expect, the text box is going to have, you know, the styles that we have specified. Now, we can also set other attributes like title, for example, if we want. So I'm going to set the title attribute to something like, please enter your first name. So you can pass any number of HTML attributes within this anonymous type and they will be applied to the text box control. Look at this, when I hover my mouse over, I get this as a tooltip. Please enter your first name. All right. Now, 
some of the HTML attributes like class, read only, you know, these are reserved C sharp keywords. So obviously when I try to use those HTML attributes, look at this, let's get rid of these two right here. And then let me try to use the class CSS, uh, I mean class attribute to set a CSS class. Look at that. Since class is a reserved keyword, it turns into a blue color. So how do I set this as an attribute? Simply precede that with the net symbol. And then you can set a CSS class. Okay, so obviously um, I'm going to have these styles within a CSS file. So if you look at my solution explorer, within this content folder I have the site.css. And let's call our CSS class as, you know, maybe red text box. And then I'm going to paste these styles within that CSS class. So let's use this as the class for our text box control. And then let's say I want this class to be, I mean, this text box control to be read only. Uh, again, read only is a keyword. So the moment we type it, it turns into blue. So let's proceed that with an at symbol. And then let's say we want the text box to be read only by passing in true. So obviously now when we run this, oh, look at that. It didn't pick up the styles. That's because we defined the styles in a style sheet, but then we didn't refer that style sheet within our view. So let's drag and drop that onto this view. Look at that. It has generated the link tag for us automatically. Let's fix this. Let's use tilde symbol there. So tilde indicate the current root directory. Uh, so that's the root directory. From the root directory, get into the content folder and then refer to site.css. So now when we run this, it should have those styles applied. Look at that. And then I'm not able to change anything within the text box. That's basically because it's set to read only. All right. Now, to generate a label, uh, we can use label HTML helper. So if you look at this text box, it's used to enter first name. So I want to label a first name there. And to achieve that, I'm going to use another HTML helper, label. And we can specify the name, which is first name, and then, you know, label text. I want the label text as first name. So now when we run this, the text box should have a label in front of them. First name is that one. All right. And there are several other HTML um, helpers as well. To generate a text box to enter password so that the input is masked, we use the password HTML helper. So instead of text box, I'm going to use a password HTML helper and give it a name, something like password. And obviously when we run this now and then when you try to type something into that, look at that, it is masked. And then to generate a multi-line text box, okay? So there might be scenarios where we want, uh, you know, um, we want the user to enter multiple lines of text, in which case we need a multi-line text box. Uh, in that case, we can use this text area HTML helper. So I'm going to use this text area. And then there is an overloaded version where it can specify, you know, uh, the name for the text box, you know, any value if you want to pre-populate that, and the number of rows and columns, and any HTML attributes that you want to specify. So the name, let's say, for example, this is going to be something like comments from the user. And I don't want to populate anything, so this value is going to be empty. Rows, let's say five rows, and then maybe 20 columns. And then I'm not going to pass any HTML attributes. So now when we run this, as you might expect, we get a multi-line text box control. Look at that. As we start typing, you know, we get a scroll bar as well. And to generate a hidden text box. Now you might be wondering, why would we need a hidden text box? A hidden text box, that will not be visible on the form. So if I use a hidden text box, and let's say we want this to store the ID of the employee so if I run this, so that that text box control will not be displayed on the web form. Why is that? Because that's a hidden text box control. Look at that. Input ID is, e uh, ID is equal to ID. Name is equal to ID. Type is equal to hidden. 
So that's a hidden text box control. Now what is the use of this hidden text box control? Hidden text box is used to store ID values. ID values are not displayed on the page because they doesn't make any sense to the end user but then we need them to update the database table when the form is posted back to the server. Okay, That's why we may use hidden fields and to generate hidden fields uh, we can use that hidden HTML helper. Is it possible to create our own HTML helpers? Absolutely. We'll discuss creating HTML uh, custom HTML helpers in a later video session. Is it mandatory to use HTML helpers uh, in an MVC application? Can't I you know, type my own HTML here? Uh, I mean, it's not mandatory. We can type the required HTML, but using HTML helpers will greatly reduce the amount of HTML that we have to write in a view. Views, in general, should be as simple as possible. All the complicated logic to generate a control can be encapsulated into these helper methods to keep our views simple. In our next video, we'll discuss generating list controls using HTML helpers. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.